Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come together and and look into your face, Lord. We um we just ask for a blessing. We ask um, for deeper understanding, and mostly for you to come into our hearts and um, make it a reality there. Amen. Amen. So I don't know if your camera will work there where you're at, Chris, but those of you, when you do talk and share, we did get some feedback about the videos. It's much more interesting if the one talking, if we can see you. <laughs> so if you're willing to, whoever you are, uh, turn your video on. Um, anyway, so yeah, Chris went on a, a little journey. He and I had had a discussion about learning, us all needing to learn to fish for men. And um, so then Chris was telling me his story a little bit. And it was very fun to hear. So if you don't mind sharing a little bit this morning, Chris, I'll, I'll give you the floor. Okay, yeah, here, I'll start the video. You guys just don't laugh if I pick my nose or, or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, we we had had that talk, and then I went, I had a lot of work and stuff was kind of busy and crazy and <clears throat> and friends of mine were asking for help too with stuff and I couldn't really I didn't really have time to but I also there was like a concrete shortage and all this stuff was going on that was just crazy anyways so we it was just hard to schedule anything and things were getting really crazy to try to figure out and um so we i just decided well i'm just gonna help friends right now people that need help after our talk about fishing for men and so then yeah my friend needed help and his, he's not a contractor and so he had these crazy schedules and it kept getting canceled and made my to the point where all these jobs that i had planned on doing kind of I just couldn't do them on on a schedule because I kept planning to help him and mess my schedule up to the point where I was just like oh I can't figure this out <laughs> and uh but it they all fell apart all my stuff and then I just kept like well I'm just gonna help him okay. said it. and and so we went down and we helped him and then it also again um fell apart when we were down there his schedule and we flew back home and then we, he was in Oregon and Southern Oregon. And then we flew back home and then went back everything a week later. Canceled. Yeah, everything got canceled. Well, well, we were planning on going back to help him. Well, then middle of the week or almost about the time we were about to leave to go back, it all fell apart for him again and completely got canceled this big job that we were supposed to do. So it really... It was just like, wow, God, what is the point of all of this? Like, just trying to help my friend. And, well, okay, we're just going to go with it. God's got a plan. And, okay, yeah, and I left all my tools down there. And so I couldn't even work the week I was home. And it just it just was one of those things where I'm just I'm having peace, God. You, you told me to fish for men right now, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> and then we get back down there, and it turns out this guy, I... I had brought my whole trailer full of solar panels, which I kind of have been selling too, as something to help make money. And the guy that we bought it from, or that, that we were doing the job for that canceled on us, I think he just felt bad. And so he bought like a really big chunk of solar panels from me. And so then that all worked out. And then it turned out that a friend of mine named Alec, who was up here, was trying to move back up here, but he was like three hours away so or or he was like an hour from where we were working so then i had my trailer now empty the other one. and he wanted to move and it just worked out i was like well just come with us and we'll and another friend from up here just drove us back so we didn't have to buy plane tickets and anyways it just god just re resolved all this problem and then helped me help another friend out who was really stressing about moving and how he was going to do it but he needs it it's better for his family up here and his kids to be up here not where they're at and <clears throat> and turned out he was just like having to drink alcohol the whole time to try to just 
stay calm about all his stressors and I was just talking to him about God and all the stuff and by the second day he didn't even he didn't even think about having a beer until I accidentally mentioned I'm like oh you haven't even had a beer today <laughs> and, he, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then uh, oh oh yeah we should stop at a gas station <laughs> and, but he, he actually he did actually though over that that trip pretty much just we actually drove all the way to Arizona to pick up more solar panels because I was out again and we just talked the whole time about God and figuring all that stuff out and having peace about everything going on and that God sounds like is working it all out for him and so then this is a new piece of the story that happened actually was happening when you wanted me to tell the story so it's maybe better that I didn't tell it then because I didn't know the rest of the story yet. <laughs> so then, I, I guess because of me having this account with the bank for a while, I deposited the check from the guy, but it was the biggest check this account has ever seen. So then the bank's like, this is fraud. And so they seized all the money and closed my account. Oh. And for like three weeks, I was trying to get my money back and figure out what had happened. And and I kept just like, God, like you, you helped me gather all these fish to help solve my problems while I was fishing for men, like you said. And I don't think you would just take all the fish away, but you know, we're just, so we're just reading stuff and having faith that it's going to work out. But the bank was, it, the bank was being crazy chased, by the way, <laughs> it was being <laughs> crazy and almost acting like they just wanted to keep the money is what it was coming down to it was like first of all they're like oh something's wrong with your account you need to prove all this documentation so i went down and did that the lady that's helping me is just like what the heck i've never seen this before and of course we're talking to people in like china or something it sounds like and and they're like no we can't release funds because this or that and then they say oh well now it's because we think the check is fraudulent so then they call the guy verify and they're like well okay now we need you to set up a new account, go through this process, and it's going to take five days to get your money. And, and the lady at the bank is just going like, what the heck? I've never seen this before. But anyways, we finally got it. And uh, so God worked it all out. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that is a big piece of the story. <laughs> and there's no, I mean, there was, yeah, three weeks of kind of, or so. The money got, went into the account, got cleared, everything. And then I went to go get a little bit out and it just locked my account and said, there's no account. And then when I went Monday, it, yeah, there was no account at the bank. And they're just like, yeah, your money has been seized due to fraud. And I'm like, what? (laughs) Wow. And and then, yeah, they, they're like, well, you don't even have an account. We can, they didn't give me many options and we, had to keep working with them and they finally it was did. a lesson of faith for sure yeah, <laughs> yeah. so so okay. it, 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 go ahead go ahead elizabeth every day it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay <laughs> who is saying that <clears throat> um both of us both of you each other good what, what can be this problem it's okay it's gonna be okay god's gonna work it out well, we kept finding good stuff to read. You know, those little Bible verses always pop up on my phone. And it's funny how they always are something perfect to do with what I'm going through. It seems almost always. Oh. Well, good. Anyway. So is, that, is it all right if I tattle on you a little bit with your story, Chris? Yeah, please, because I forget details. Anyway. That's okay. So, so part of it, and you can choose to add or comment or maybe say that I'm confused or whatever, but... Part of this, from my perspective of this story that uh, Chris is telling you all, is that often in the summertime, Chris, you know, it's seasonal work. And so he just goes, 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 and and they don't work as much in the wintertime. So they got to get it all done in the summertime. And by late summer, fall, uh, Chris is so burned out, he's kind of beside himself. And um, so he, the last few years, uh, we've just sort of been talking back and forth about what it means to uh, learn continuously more to trust in the Lord and to, to know that the Lord is providing for us so we're not mentally so wiped out. And uh, that, that's my perspective of the whole story. So it was very fun uh, to listen to Chris when he got back 
after it sounded like he went to California and then he came back home and he went to California and then he went to Arizona and then back to California and then to Arizona again and then home, I think is what happened. But in all of that story, as he was just describing it to you, all the plans that they thought they were making were going off rail and kept getting changed and it turned into better and better and better things. Uh, and then of course, this last piece that you're sharing, Chris, it's like, wow, so the Lord did provide uh, for you, even though uh, you were practicing and learning, not stressing about money and just helping people. And then lo and behold, you got to wait with your, you know, holding your breath for a little bit longer, as Elizabeth just said, um, exercising faith for the Lord to actually finish taking care of the, the whole plan. So the fun about that for me, hearing all that when Chris was telling me was how much fun Chris was having, uh, practicing not stressing about the money and when where the money was going to come from, even at the beginning of the story, um, and that the Lord was going to uh, teach him how to help and serve and bless and even teach the gospel, uh, as he was sharing a little bit about to Alex. So I don't know if I got any of that summary wrong, Chris, you're, you're welcome to correct something. But um, anyway, it was fun, fun hearing the story. No, I'd say you got it pretty good. I, I guess one more thing I was thinking is both of the friends that ended up being helped. I mean, I was in, I'm just so blessed by the whole experience. And, you know, a lot of times with work, when I get so busy, I get, I don't always feel the, um, I guess the word is the meaningfulness of it, you know, after a while, but I did the whole time I was helping these friends and both of them were one of them now I mean he he's gone through some really tough stuff addicted to some really bad drugs and all sorts of stuff and and he's doing better you know that was even a long time ago but he's doing better now and and just enjoying and actually coming over and staying with us a little bit while he's getting his work stuff figured out and the other one was really I think just like what you're not upset that all this stuff fell through and all that <laughs> and i mean i was kind of like yeah i guess i'm i'm kind of amazed that i'm not <laughs> as irritated as it seems like i should be too <laughs> but god was god was uh, just helping me learn some cool stuff so very good very good well that's a great story to start us off with where we're going to go with our study this morning um I do want to add a little bit of sharing and, and maybe um, John and, and my mom can pitch in a little bit on this one. The other night we had the, uh, well, I guess it was morning for us. I keep thinking night because on the video, Zoom video, yeah, the sun was going down on the people there in Bangladesh and it was getting darker and darker. But we got a chance uh, a couple weeks ago to do Justice and Mercy with the, um, the baptismal class that Kalal is leading out in. So there's a group there that's um, preparing for baptism. And after we got done with Just and Mercy, their next big question was, well, then wait a minute, how does forgiveness work, right? So we're explaining to them about how uh, God, God is both just and merciful to both the acceptors and the rejectors of God's grace all the time. So he's, he's just and merciful all the time. So then they, their next question, was, well, how does forgiveness work then? So we just did that uh, Friday morning our friday morning uh five o'clock in the morning we were on with bangladesh and so we were having fun going through explaining how unconditionally forgiving god is and different stories different examples and it's all translated so it's uh, it's, it's more difficult you know one we're on video instead of in person and then two it's translated to a different language so i'm not always exactly sure if they understood it when it got through the other end but anyway um as the sun was going down and it was getting dark, you know, I was feeling like, well, we better quit because it might be their bedtime. I don't know when these people go to bed. Um, and we had been going for an hour and a half anyway. So I thought, well, that's good. And then there just seemed to be this sort of hesitancy to get off the call. Like uh, they, they hardly ever say anything, you know, and maybe I can get Kalal to squeeze a response out of them back to us a little bit. But but no, the last half hour of our study, there was uh, more questions, more comments than usual. And Kalal 
his smile was bigger than than I remember seeing it before. Although as it's getting dark, you know, we could only see Kalal's face uh, by the light reflecting off of his phone. And um, anyway, it just seemed to be like they they were kind of enjoying and didn't want to get off the call. And I wasn't sure now should we should we get off the call or should we stay on or what we should do. <laughs> so anyway, af- after it was all done, uh, both mom and John. Uh, saw and read some responses coming, I think, as quickly as 10, 15 minutes after we got off the call. So what was your guys' take on on how that affected uh, uh, Kalal and the group, especially mom, being as you weren't even on the call, you didn't get to observe any of it, but uh, either one of you, John or mom. Well, Kalal, <clears throat> Kalal was really excited. In fact, <clears throat> he kept texting me for oh, an hour and a half after the meeting <laughs> about how much they learned and how beautiful it was and <clears throat> that this group, you know, this is his baptismal group. And so he's, he is really excited about what they're learning. He couldn't stop telling me about it. And then he sent me another picture of the cucumbers because I don't <laughs> I told him, wow, your cucumbers are so amazing. I got two little cucumbers off my plant so far, so <clears throat> it's too hot over here for cucumbers. <laughs> uh, anyways, he was really cute about it. <clears throat> yeah, well, I, I could just read his response. Um, and uh, actually, this was a little bit uh, later after the meeting. It wasn't directly after the meeting, but um, uh, he said, we are very excited. The love and the truth of God once again fully refreshed us with strength of faith and his unconditional love and forgiveness really made a great hope with a very simple way in our hearts as we understood, which is uh, Kalal speak for it was simple and we totally understood it. <laughs> so. Yeah, it was, it was it was interesting because I've asked them a few times in our studies as we go along, you know, so so do they understand what we're saying, Kolo? And then he'll look at them and talk and then he'll say, uh, yes, we understand. And that's typically has been his response. But this time his response is, wow, this was simple. <laughs> so to underscore what that was, uh, again, we were talking about trying to, the whole time we were working on the question about forgiveness and we had made it about halfway, a little more than halfway through. And I asked the question about the prodigal son and the prodigal son's dad, as many of you have heard me ask. I asked, when, when did the father forgive the boy? And one of the students in the class bravely piped up immediately and said, well, when the boy fell down on his knees and repented, right? Which is our typical thinking. So I spent the next 20 minutes challenging that to slowly change that to where they under, under could accept and understand that the father forgave the boy before the boy even left, right? And talking about God. Anyway, so that was kind of the focus of the subject. And um, we even I even got brave enough to uh, try using a parable form on them, the idea of the town thief uh, stealing from Kalal some bananas. Uh, to eat and um, you know if Kalal was willing to give those bananas anyway uh, and had the same forgiving compassion that Christ did would it be a problem to to anyone if, if you know the bananas were stolen well not really and well what if he went to another house in the village and stole some something else some other stuff and and uh, if that person was filled with the love of Christ would they would they mind if the stuff was stolen or would they give it freely? And anyway, we're getting to the, the, I did that three times. And then the fourth one was, but what if, what if that man now, well, I asked the question, I guess, first, who was being hurt in the story? Uh, the people being stolen from or what? And they said, no, the man stealing is the one being hurt. So we discussed the ways being hurt, the guilt he's living with, the uh, crisis that he's in the fear that he lives under that he might not have what he needs doesn't believe the town really loves and cares about him so what would justice do was the question is justice saying well we need to cut the guy's hand off or is it saying we need to teach him that we love him and we care about him all he's got to do is ask you know 
like the Jewish law, uh, the stranger passing through their, their, their land could just have out of their fields whatever they needed, right? Um, that's a whole different way of thinking. Anyway, so we're kind of wrapping that up on the end there. And I, I added the idea that, well, but this poor fellow that keeps stealing and, and lives under all this fear and guilt, what happens if one day he goes to a house that isn't full of someone like Jesus and steals? He might get shot dead, right? So there's the the real problem is is what's going on in the person who's being hurt. But that's not the perspective that we normally have. We think justice is about I've been harmed and now I need to get paid back. And when we apply that to God, it turns it into God has been sinned against. So he's upset. Now he's got to get payback. And luckily, Jesus, you know, took care of Jesus or God getting the payback so that now we're off the hook. That's kind of the theory that we are always teaching. So, so anyway, that was kind of uh, the, just the, the background of what was fun for Kalal's group. They were enjoying it so much, they asked if we could get a, a – so they, remember, the, for them, that was Friday evening, Friday night. So they were just starting Sabbath as we concluded with that discussion. So that meant they got to – do whatever they did all day Sabbath and discuss it and talk about it more, maybe, and uh, at least think about it. And then they asked, can we get on Sunday morning, our Sunday morning? So that'll be five o'clock tomorrow morning for us, Sunday evening for them. And um, and they, they sounded like they still wanted to continue that particular discussion. But we just thought you guys would like hearing a little bit about that. And hopefully you did see the harvest pictures of the cucumbers and, and there there was... I think pictures of some other things harvested or whatever, but anyway, so it'd be exciting over there if those, that little group will start getting it and start just telling everybody in the town that they're loved and forgiven by God. So I thought that'd be cool. <clears throat> Any other thing to add to that mom or John? No, it was cool. In fact, uh, you reminded me, I need to figure out when I think we're supposed to connect tonight to catch them in the morning. So I yeah, I, I, coordinate with him on that. Yeah, I better check because I'm pretty sure he was saying it's our Sunday morning, five o'clock. Oh, Sunday, yeah. Their okay. Sunday evening, but but you can check with him to be oh, sure. Yeah. All right. So for our scripture study today, let's turn again to Galatians. And, and let me just remind everybody we've been working on what in the world is Paul trying to explain to us about uh, rights by faith versus the law or the law versus grace. And, and, and we're in anything that Paul wrote. Uh, so Romans, uh, Colossians, Corinthians, any of the books that he wrote. Uh, I'll start our thoughts off again in Galatians, but you can take us where, wherever your thoughts go. And then if we have time, I want to conclude with a, a fun article that we stumbled across uh, about um, Sabbath, which will connect with the discussion we had two weeks ago, where I read from Romans about circumcision and I replaced circumcision with Sabbath keeping and if any of you remember that anyway so uh, that that be a kind of a cool article but let's start with Galatians chapter 2 and starting with uh, verse 14 and who'd be willing to read for us um, doesn't matter what version we start in Denise, are you awake and with us? I am. Are you interested in reading a little? Sure. I'm trying to get there. Sure, no hurry. <clears throat> You'll take us from 14 down through 21. Sorry, can you tell me again? Galatians. Yeah, Galatians 2. Uh huh. <clears throat> Verse 14 down through 21. Sure. But when I saw that their conduct was not in step with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, if you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you force the Gentiles to live like Jews? We ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. 
so we also have believed in Jesus Christ in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, because by works of the law, no one will be justified. But if in our endeavor to be justified in Christ, we too were found to be sinners, is Christ then a servant of sin? Certainly not. For if I rebuild what I tore down, I prove myself to be a transgressor. For through the law, I died to the law, so that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if justification were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. And that last sentence should be a troubling one to us. <laughs> if righteousness or justification, were you reading from, uh, what were you reading from? What I was reading from ESV. ESV, okay. So if justification or righteousness came through the law, then Christ died in vain. Um, all right, what do you guys see in, in any of that? <clears throat> Again, he's hammering on this subject about law and about rights by faith. He seems very intent on getting us off of uh, being justified by the works of the law. Well, I find it interesting how uh, so many like to say that that's the mosaic law and to me it's definitely stating right there in chapter two that it's about the ten commandments yeah or in other words we make the argument trying to make it out to be just the ceremonial law yes yeah and of course that was our big struggle as an advent people back in 88 1888 right because uh, we had spent so much time vigorously arguing that the law had not been done away with that surely Paul could not be talking about the law, the law. So he must be talking about ceremonial law. And this is still the same argument that is uh, used by our family, Adventist family. Today, yeah. Imme it's immediately, as soon as you read these verses. <laughs> so... You know, it's a bold thing to say this is the Ten Commandments. Even, even if it is, uh, I mean, either way, if, if the interpretation of verse 14 is that he's talking about Jewish customs, right? He's getting after Peter for requiring Gentiles to do Jewish customs. Um, then even even in their attempt to keep the law through man's strength, they built man's law, they built traditions and customs to try and force themselves or make themselves keep the law. Yeah. So it kind of works either either way you look at it. <clears throat> so what, what do you think the custom, if we call it a custom, what do you think the custom was that Paul is addressing here with Peter? Uh, well, I mean, he's, he's talking and I mean, he's basically getting after Peter for requiring the Gentiles to do things because Peter's worried about what the Jews are going to think. And which Jews was he worried about? Well, the uh, the Message Bible says the watchdogs from Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> those uh, those, and then and then it even goes so far as to say, uh, what right do you have to require non-Jews to conform to Jewish customs just to make a favorable impression on your old Jerusalem cronies? <laughs> Okay, so, so so that's which version of Bible? That's message. It's message. Uh, 
Yeah. So, uh, but try that from Amplified, verse 11 and 12. Okay. Uh, now, when uh, Peter came to Antioch, I opposed him face to face about his conduct there because he stood condemned by his own actions. Uh, before certain men came from James, he used to eat his meals with the Gentiles. But when the men from Jerusalem arrived, he began to withdraw and separate himself from the Gentile believers because he was afraid of those from the circumcision. The rest of the Jews joined him in this hypocrisy. Verse 13 ignoring their knowledge that Jewish and Gentile Christians were united under the new covenant into one faith. So there's a cross-reference here to Acts chapter 10, okay. verse 27. I was looking to see if it helped me. Peter lift, but Peter lifted him up. So what's the kind of... Peter meets Cornelius and the following day so this, I'm just going to read from verse 24. We'll see. I haven't read this before the, today uh, in regards to this question. So I'm, I'm reading this to see if it helps us. And the following day, uh, they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them, and he called together his relatives, close friends. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up. I myself am also a man. And he talked with him. He went in front and found many who had come together. Then he said to them, you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one, one to another nation. But God, God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. I asked them, for what reason have I come? Okay, so this is the story of, of when the net came down with the unclean meat in it. Remember the dream? And, and Peter, God was telling Peter to go see Cornelius, but Peter had a problem in him still. And that was that he, he had still had this Jewish training of putting the distinction between Jewish people who were God's people and everybody else. And uh, this is part of the reason why in Galatians, Paul um, uh, says that he was set apart to the uncircumcised, whereas Peter was to the circumcised or to the Jew. And, and that's partly because Peter, uh, as we see here in, in Galatians, now it's identifying even for a while, he struggled quite a long time with this, oh boy, I've got to worry about what my, now, now here's, the, here's the distinction though. Were these Jews from the temple who were there to oppose the gospel being taught, or were these, it says, from James? Who is James? Anybody's version help with that in verse 12? Before certain men came from James. Isn't this James, Jesus' brother, who's the head of the church? <laughs> well I, I don't know if they called him the head of the church uh but but we watch in the story how you remember there was in act the book of acts this meeting where the brethren came together to discuss what what laws should be placed on the 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 gentiles and this wasn't just ceremonial laws this was remember they came down to wow we're only going to have two or three and so they were discussing all law together uh it wasn't just custom, but they were going through customs, uh, trying to figure out which of these should we make them do or not do. And, and there was quite a discussion. So this is the same James that led out that meeting in the book of Acts. So these are, these are converted followers of Jesus, converted from old Judaism to what's now the new church. And yet this new church was still struggling immediately with this subject. Is, is kind of the point we need to get out of this. They weren't, because they were disciples of Jesus, immediately uh, rescued from their struggle of how to deal with the law and what was 
the purpose of the law and the role of the law, they were combining still the idea of faith, it's righteousness by faith, and then do these uh, ceremonies or read this law, keep this moral law, make sure you're doing it kind of strategy, uh, which is, is more, makes it more interesting because this, this wasn't a Jews sent from Annas or Caiaphas. The, these were actually uh, what they would have considered brethren at the time, believers in Jesus Christ, but they still had this struggle with thinking that, well, but, but you're Gentiles and we're Jews. Kind of like when you hear people Sabbath morning. And we don't say, do that. That's right. When you hear people Sabbath morning make comments about, well, you know, they're pretty good people and they believe a lot in Jesus, but they're, they're not keeping Sabbath yet or they're not Adventist yet. We have this mentality, this distinction that we're ahead of everybody else and they're not quite there yet. And that's exactly what this was going on here in verse 11. So that makes that sort of interesting. So Peter's in trouble because... Again, he forgot what he did, what we just read in Acts. In Acts, he got it right. He said to Cornelius, hey, I'm not supposed to be calling anybody unclean and putting any distinction between Jew or Gentile. And then here, uh, kind of what, I, I know this from the from Acts of the Apostles book, um, that there was this growing unrest between the believers because Paul was was being too clear about salvation not through the law <laughs> and so even even the the christians in jerusalem were were worried about this guy running around out there like a loose cannon saying that the the law was no longer uh to apply in regards to your salvation <clears throat> and that made uh the the even the early christians nervous which would have been James, and in this case, even Peter, and it says even Barnabas got carried away into this, swept away, right? Um, earlier in chapter two, it talks about how he contends, contended with this, uh, I guess chapter one, or in the first part of chapter two, he contended with this, but but they were he, he was not swayed, and Timothy was not swayed, and then he gets down to this particular event, and Barnabas even got a little uh, carried away with this uh, idea that yes we're supposed to make sure you're eating right and you're dressed right or whatever those types of stuff anyway it definitely had to do with peter not looking like he was associating too friendly and too closely with those who weren't circumcised converted uh, jewish uh, law keeping christians would be a way to put it you got any thoughts on that anybody Because that's why verse 16 then should hit hard. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. That's such foreign, it's hard for us to wrap our, our brain around, isn't it? Well, how do we deal with the inevitable immediate response when you say that which is well yeah but what about james that says uh show me your uh faith and i'll show you your works or you know what james doesn't say that but that that's ultimately the accusation that immediately gets pointed is well then you should just that works without faith is dead yep that which, which is the guy being being pointed out in verse twelve of this of this chapter, right? Same James mm -hmm. that these men came from that were struggling with uh, keeping the law to make sure that you were uh, obedient enough to make it into heaven. <laughs> which they won't like that response either. <laughs> <laughs> that will not satisfy their question, which is the point, because we know that James in the book of James, which is also uh, inspired scripture, uh, as I read it, um, he is saying that when you are justified by faith, the works that come out of you will show that. And James is not talking about not eating with Gentiles. He's talking then about putting, because later in that same book, James is the one who says, 
if you say to this man, come sit over here in this special place, and the other man, you go sit over there, then, then you are showing distinction and you make void the gospel. So apparently, at, my, later, at some point, James must have got that. Well, my response to the question when they, pay, they throw that out there, works without faith is dead, I just respond, and faith without works, or work, works without, that. no, faith with no yeah works without how's it go wait you were gonna say works without faith yeah works without faith is dead yeah so mm -hmm. so it's the, which, the other way around which james actually explains right in his book so if we if we think that james the in the book of james is actually making a good argument against verse 16 and 17 uh then then we're we're trying to use it's james trouble. out of context to prove our false theory which which paul is smashing to pieces over here <laughs> <laughs> but you're right that that's the kind of thinking even in our own selves I, I can tell you that i had fun uh with the discussion with shady the last couple of days as she was uh, accepting my challenge for an exercise to just ask a question of someone else to see what their input was not to fix it not to change it but but then this question came up and I found myself then reading uh, a post on the internet, on the web about, and, and this is where we're gonna take our discussion for the rest of this, this morning, about Sabbath. And as I was reading it, I found that, uh, that once again, my old training tapes just boom, started going to work about, wow, see they're wrong here and wrong there and that's wrong. And, and, and I had to read it, you know, back up and read it again and go, well, wait a minute, this is actually saying what Paul said that I've been reading for the last <laughs> Romans, Galatians, Colossians, and they're quoting, you know, and so, so that had to get past that immediate trained response, which is what you were just referring to, John, we have our trained response and I actually go, what, so what is it saying? What is, what is Paul saying? Anyway, anybody got any particular thoughts out of what you, you get from what Paul's saying in these verses that Denise read for us. Someone summarize it simply. Stop trying to save yourself. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. So the article we stumbled on this morning, John, I think you, you got that where you could put it up for us to all read mm -hmm. the same. Yep. And in the reference to it, if you guys want to find it, it's actually something that Wagner wrote. I was going to dig through some of Wagner's stuff on this subject uh, because in 1888, this was this exact same discussion. It was an important discussion and we've been confused about the discussion still to this day. So this is what I had never seen before, had never read before, but it's there. So it's actually the reference for it is THSA on your EGY app, THSA uh, space 1.1, one one, mm -hmm. if you wanted to look it up in your own app. But th this is um, apparently like a pamphlet that Wagner put out uh discussing the sabbath and i, I want to just kind of read through this together with you all to see uh how he discusses this issue in conjunction with what he was teaching about Galatians <clears throat> and the role of the law go ahead john is it is it not on screen yeah no it is i thought you were gonna say something Oh, no, nope. it, it, is, it is. So we'll read this down together and then you guys can pitch in and tell me what you think about it. both the Sabbath subject, the law subject, moral, ceremonial, all that. Uh, but just watch what Wagner did with this after he worked so hard at um, Galatians and Romans and all that, trying to understand this and present it to us. So we'll start at the, as you see, Frank, do you think we should start at the very beginning or should we start at the, uh, the middle one? I think we should start. Uh, I think we should start at the middle. The middle, okay. So yeah, because it's, it's down. pretty long. So if you can, if you, like can, if you can slide us down. Sabbath. Yeah, start us, John, down at 
the, the junior, junior Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah. There and, you go. All right, thank you. And I'll, I'll read here, and you guys uh, follow along either on your app or John will do it there on the screen. The Jewish Sabbath. There is such a thing as the, quote, Jewish Sabbath or the Sabbath of the Jew. But it is a far different thing from the Sabbath of the Lord. Many people imagine that if one observes the seventh day, he is keeping the Jewish Sabbath. But that does not at all follow. No one keeps the Jewish Sabbath if he keeps the, the Sabbath according to the commandment. There is the same difference between the Jewish Sabbath and the real Sabbath of the Lord as there is between man and God. Let me explain. <clears throat> the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. But we have seen that the Lord's rest is spirit, a spiritual rest which the seventh day commemorates. A man may cease from physical toil on the seventh day of the week and not keep the Sabbath of the Lord. If a man stops work on Friday evening at sunset and abstains from all the labor until the next day at sunset, merely as a form of worship, notice this, merely as a form of worship or in order that he may be physically better able to go at his work again, or, so there's three things here, or with the thought that he is thereby discharging a duty and gaining the favor of God, that is not keeping the Sabbath of the Lord. So contemplate those three things for a minute and ask yourself, which Sabbath have you had? Does it fit any one of those three? Again, those three, merely as a form of worship, a way to worship God, go to the house of God to worship God, or in order that you might get some physical rest so you better be able to go back to work on Sunday, or with the thought that thereby you're discharging, you're basically doing what God asked, you're obeying, and so you're gaining his approval or favor or his applause or his smile, all of that is not Sabbath keeping, is what Wagner is suggesting. Anybody got any thought on that? Bold. <laughs> bold. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah, I mean, as bold it, as we should be. <laughs> it should shake us a little bit. To keep the well, Sabbath. Go ahead, Frank. I'm just going to bring up what I brought up earlier before the meeting start is. Uh, the Lord himself quoted, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. So is he quoting from those three things? Yeah. <laughs> I told Frank, I said, I think we usually think that means he's the Lord. He made the Sabbath so he can make the rules. For the Sabbath. But what were you thinking it means, Frank? Well, if you go along with Paul's writing that he is the second... Adam, he was uh, the Lord of the Sabbath by uh, resting fully in God, and that's why he knew uh, he knew God in an intimate manner because of his rest in God. He was fully human, yet he submitted totally in God, thereby being the Lord of the Sabbath. Yeah, so it really means he's the one that made the day holy. And only he can make it holy, and only he can make us holy. Correct. Rather than he made the rules, and we're supposed to obey it. <laughs> All right, reading on. Well, I think it, I think it goes on in this too about about the sanctification, and he's the recreator. Yeah, that's up in the first section, but we'll we'll read on here. To keep the Sabbath of the Lord is to delight in the Lord. I I love that sense because I thought. To delight in the Sabbath, and you had to just convince yourself that you loved the Sabbath, the day. But that says to keep the Sabbath of the Lord is to delight in the Lord. Those who do not delight themselves in the Lord do not keep his Sabbath. Now think about that. When we have sat in church or Sabbath school or any other place, uh, while, while being nervous about meeting our Creator, Word, we're not good enough, you know, all those things that we can experience under fear and guilt and doubt, which are caused by sin. That just said, 
when we're not delighting in the Lord, you're not keeping Sabbath at all, no matter when you abstain from labor. It is absolutely impossible for one who is not a Christian to keep the Lord's Sabbath. For, as we have seen, God's rest comes only from his perfect work, which is found only in Christ. We which believe do enter into that rest, quote, that's from Hebrews, therefore, no Jew, so-called, as distinguished from a believer in Christ, keeps the Sabbath. This is pointing out that when we make distinctions between us and them in any manner, we're not keeping the Sabbath. That's what I heard that just said. No Jew, so-called, as distinguished from a believer in Christ, keeps the Sabbath of the Lord, even though apparently he apparently rests during the seventh day of the week he rests in his own rest and not the rest of the lord do you see the difference the jewish sabbath falls on the same day of the week as the lord's sabbath but it is not by any means the same thing it meaning the jewish sabbath it represents only man himself and his own work instead of being a sign of justification by faith in the work of the Lord, it is the sign of self-righteousness. E. What proves that true? I mean, that's a that's a bold statement, but what do you, what do you think proves that true? What proves it true is just if in our program thinking, we think of ourselves as better than others because we keep all 10, not just nine. It is then a sign of self-righteousness as indicated by the question which the Jews asked of Jesus, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? They counted their own works equal to the works of God. Their obedience was not the obedience of faith, but rather obedience of form or law. From such a Sabbath, I like this, from such a Sabbath may the Lord deliver us, help us, Lord. It is... It is from it, meaning that kind of Sabbath, that we are delivered in truth in the true Sabbath of the Lord. For we are saved from our own works and given the perfect works of the Lord. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. But let us beware of making it mere character of rest or the pretend rest or a cartoon of rest. Let us take it for what it is, the rest of the Lord. Any thoughts on that? Sounds like we're not supposed to make an image of the Sabbath. <laughs> no one. image of the Sabbath. Was that who was that? Was that Amber? That was Amber, yeah. Oh Amber got down good. <clears throat> yeah, no no making images of the Sabbath. That's a good way to put it. Anybody else? You okay with this? You want me to keep reading? I'll, I'm going to back up then to the very beginning of the article. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> we usually love to dive into the third section, but I want you to see the first section first. Okay, let me. Anybody, let got, me anybody got a thought or question before we read on? Well, I, you know, I was thinking we should change our little greeting to uh, "Happy Rest in Jesus Day." Happy Rest in Jesus Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, it, go ahead. Hey, I was just going to say something. It kind of, you know, thinking about, you know, the what you had told me, you know, the story I was going to tell was going to be about when you when you mentioned it a couple of weeks ago was Chris is going to tell us about resting or, or about his Sabbath experience. Well, you know, like it sounds sort of to me like <clears throat> like Veterans Day is just a day to commemorate veterans well we could still do that every single day of the year too but this is just one day that we're going to think about it a little more well you know as i'm learning about this resting in god thing you know it it more and more seems like that like well on sabbath is just one day out of the week that we're gonna commemorate what we're doing all the rest of the days of the week 
you know, when we're actually doing it, right. Where we're actually resting that God is going to provide manna from heaven Mm. for my family every day, you know, and anyways, that's just my thought on that. Yeah. That that was exactly the connection I was thinking of, because although I had not read this article before that, (laughs) so So it's it's nice. It's nice to look at it that way. Yeah, hold on. You can uh, let me uh, let me say this, and then you can jump in, Frank. So as we read this next section, Chris, I'm going to be really curious if that if you see exactly what you just said in this next section. Go ahead, Frank. Well, I'm just going to say. Uh, that's exactly right, because if you look at the law itself, it says a day of reflection about his creation. And now we can look at it as a reflection of his recreating us. Yeah. Sanctification. Sanctification. Uh, yes. <laughs> All right. One can in the truth speak. One can in truth speak of Sabbaths, plural, only as one can speak of many gods. There is no God but one. For though there be that are, sorry, called so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are gods many and lords many, yet to us there is one God, the Father of whom all are all things, and we through him and the one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and we through him. So though there be various Sabbaths, so-called, there is but one true Sabbath, the Sabbath of the Lord. So watch what he's going to do with that. The word Sabbath means rest. It is a Hebrew word transferred into English language. When the Hebrew used the word Sabbath, it conveyed the same idea to them of the word rest, that rest does to us. The fourth commandment therefore really says to us, remember the rest day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the rest day of the Lord. In it that you shall not do any work, not you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, maidservant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the rest day and hallowed it. We must not make the mistake, you ready for this one, Amber? We must not make the mistake of judging of the Lord's rest from what men are accustomed to calling rest. So don't assume that when God rested that it's what we meant by rest. God is not a man. We should rather learn from God, God's rest what rest really is. God's rest is not mere physical rest from weariness. This we know from two facts. First, God is spirit, not a spirit, as though he were one of many, but he is the spirit, as it is rendered in the margin of the, of the revised second, I think some of the revised version, quote, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. The Lord, therefore, did not rest because he was tired, and his rest is not physical, but spiritual, since he is spirit, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, God rested not because he was weary, but because his work was finished. When work is finished and is well done, nothing but rest remains. In six days, God finished his work. And as he surveyed it, he pronounced it very good. There was no flaw in it. It was without fault before him. Therefore, since God's work was done and well done at the close of the sixth day, he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And we got thoughts on that so far? That's good. It's a, it's a nice uh, switch from how we uh, may normally think of Sabbath and rest. Yeah, I thought what was interesting is it turned the um, focus from, wait, what, what's the rules we're supposed to follow on the Sabbath day? Yeah. To, to wait, this is actually about something God did. What did he do again? <laughs> well, he created and he made, and then he rested from creating. 
I mean, it was done, it was finished, but I, it's great that it will focus. So when I read this next paragraph, the question is for you to think about, does this describe more the work we've done to accomplish that? Well, before you would jump, I was just ahead, thinking ahead, because we also have to look at Jesus, who's also our creator. It did what did he do on the Sabbath? Serve, bless, help, and, and recreate yep. those that had withered hands. He brought them back to normal. So, so we have to really look at what he means by rest. Right. Mm. Which, which is why when Jesus was challenged about that, he said. What do you mean? My father and I have worked every day. <laughs> and yeah. well, I, like, I always, I'm thinking about the um, children of Israel. You know, he he takes them out of Egypt. I mean, they didn't do anything. He did it. You know, they. I mean, they could they could have been at rest, but of course, they didn't know how much they should trust him yet. But he he just solves all their problems. Here you go, and then they're whining and then he solves their problems again then they come to the river or the, the the big red sea and it's like this little this little problem to god but a big problem to them and they're you know here they could be just at rest you know which i can't blame them it's hard to be at rest when you got armies coming you know and a big ocean here to cross i guess we're just just block you and then then he just solves the problem they get across and all the enemies all die they could just be at rest you know and they're, they're grateful but then they like now we're out in the desert and we're wandering around and there's no water you know they start whining again and like did you just plan to kill us out here you know? <laughs> and they could just be at rest that wow he did all this other stuff and and i mean i do it all the time so i'm not saying i'm better but when you think about it all like that then they're out of food Man, the starts Lord, falling. Lord, did out you of just the sell all those solar panels so, that I couldn't get the money? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chris. So what you're seeing in the Old Testament, <laughs> see, that's what I was telling Bobby. It's the once same too. thing. Yeah, throughout the Old Testament, God is challenging his people. He's to trying rest to get them to him. see it. To exactly. see that he's actually just good and and literally just gonna. I mean, and when I think about it, he doesn't tell them go out here and strive really hard and like you know, you're only going to do good if you work hard, you know, and I mean, he literally just like go out here and just hang out and here's your food every day. Maybe you can do some nice things for some people because you don't have to worry about your food. It's just falling out of the sky every day. And, <laughs> and then, you know, so why, why would you worry? But then they're trying to collect like extra food so they can store it up, you know, for what if it doesn't come tomorrow? You know, <laughs> and, and so then he has to make it to where the food rots and gets really stinky by the end of every day, you know, and then the only day that it lasts is Saturday. So, so, you know, we go to work every day and we strain like I do, or you, you know, used to a lot more and worrying about what if there's no work tomorrow, cause there's another recession and all these things. And, and then as I've been trusting more and looking at those things, it is, it's God just keeps providing the, um, the needs for our family and, um, and resolving our problems and so so learning to trust him it's been it's been very restful and very peaceful every day of the week when i actually i just have to keep reading this kind of stuff and remembering all this stuff yeah good <laughs> your story just turned into a gospel power presentation chris awesome that's exactly right because when in, the, in this next paragraph watch how it describes the kind of sabbath we've been doing <laughs> says god well, I just go ahead sorry i just no. find it so so amazing that he didn't tell them to go out there in the desert and strain and strive he actually just gave them everything everything they needed even water food you know uh, i mean shelter their sandals didn't wear out you know all, all this stuff and yet they keep trying to create what they had in egypt you know like oh we're gonna work really hard and you know create this stuff get back on that rat right wheel all right so this is still talking about god and him resting from his 
work of creating. Um, says he had no sad reflections, no regrets. His rest was not marred as what man calls rest so often is. How is our rest marred? Here's how, by any such thoughts as, quote, tomorrow I must go at that work again, nor I wish that I had done this portion a little differently. Or if I could do that over again, I could make an improvement. Or the last day's work is so bad that I cannot bear to even look at it. I was so tired when I got to that part of my job, it couldn't, I couldn't half do it. Nothing of this kind. So he's saying God didn't have any of those kind of, of thoughts. But when you apply, apply that list of thoughts to our week and then enter into Sabbath, it, it makes it near impossible, right? Every portion of the work, even man with God, for, for God's work, even man was as perfect as it was possible for it to be. And God took pure delight in contemplating the work from which he was resting because it was complete and perfect. This is the rest he offers to you, to us, to me. It is not something that he imposes on us. You got that? It's not something that he imposes on us. Every time we teach that he's imposing an obedience test, uh, if Wagner is right, then we're teaching the wrong thing. It is not something that he imposes on us, but which he in everlasting love and kindness gives to us. Rest is not a task that is laid upon you. It is not a burden. They who look upon the Sabbath as a burden have no idea of what sa the Sabbath of the Lord really is. It is rest, perfect, unalloyed, alloyed, meaning it's, it's not mixed it with any falsities. It's perfect rest. Jesus Christ is the one by whom the worlds were made. For in him were all things created in heaven and upon earth. Therefore, he is the one who offers this rest. To every soul, he cries, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The rest is found in him because in him, the works of God are completed. In him is the new creation, and if any man be in him, he is a new creature. On the cross, Jesus cried, it is finished, thus showing that in the cross we find that perfect rest that comes alone from the finished work of the Lord. Uh, anybody got any thoughts on how the cross, the work of the Lord on the cross, brings us perfect rest? Uh, the idea that, that he has saved us and we don't have any work to do except to rest in that. Good. And the foundation under that would be how much he loves you, which the rest flows from, right? In other words, if he loves us, he's going to feed us. If he loves us, he's going to take care of us if he loves us. But I was thinking about that. How much he loves us just in regards to watching Kalal's group the other day, uh, how they were responding in their heart to finding out that, like I, one of the things I told them was, I, I hope you don't think that you're going to get baptized so that God can forgive you, that he actually already forgave you. And the only reason to get baptized would be if you're excited enough about his love and forgiveness towards you that you want to be more like him and repent of what you have been not loving and forgiving like him right so so that that rest starts when it's created in your understanding how much god really loves you and is on your side now think about our panic and fear in our our, our upbringing and our training in regards to the investigative judgment how much rest has that created for any of us when it's been taught the wrong way. Reading on, this rest is gained by faith, which we which believe do enter into the rest. So that's out of Hebrews. How so? Because by faith we have finished 
we have finished perfect work of the Lord as our own. We have. So that means you've got it. Because by faith, you have the finished perfect work of the Lord. This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. Believing him means receiving him. And since in him the works of God are complete, it follows that by believing on him, we find this rest. The rest that Jesus gives is rest from sin. The heavy laden whom he calls to him are those who are burdened with the weight of their sins. All men are thus burdened, for all have sinned. Our best works are utterly worthless. <laughs> Well, there he goes again, pointing out how we have not been doing too well. Christ will have a people who are zealous for good works, but the good works must be those which God himself has wrought or built for us in Christ. Only his work is enduring. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. Therefore, by grace ye are saved through faith and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. Lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before prepared that we should walk in them. It is not by works done in righteousness, which we did ourselves, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of of the regenerating and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. It is by the works of God, therefore, that we are saved and not by our own. Good works there are in abundance, and they are for us too, but through no work of our own. There you go, Chris. Solely through the perfect work of God in Jesus. If the works were our own, then the rest would be our own. But God gives us his rest, not ours, because only his works can yield perfect rest. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered, or literally, he hath made a memorial for his wondrous works. That memorial is the seventh day, the day on which he rested from all his works. That day, he has blessed and sanctified and made holy. Its holiness has never departed from it. For whatsoever God does, it shall be for whatsoever God does, it shall be forever. No matter what man does, nor how man regards the day, its holiness remains. <laughs> Any thoughts? <laughs> I got to pause there. Too much at one time. <clears throat> Is that fitting, Chris, with what you were saying? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Um, yeah. I mean, that's a, strong, that's a strong emphasis on this cannot be about your works. I would like to ask a question. Go for it, Jim. Of the group, but I was hoping that bobby will not answer the question i won't <laughs> frank will not answer the question chris will not answer the question but someone or else the group. Okay. <clears throat> so after hearing all of this how do you keep the sabbath Uh, he, he made the group very narrow. So Denise, Shady, or Amber, <laughs> Amber, Mom. Keep it every day. And him, not yourself. By relying on him and not yourself. By resting in him and not yourself. Good. Anyone else? How do you keep the Sabbath? My mom would say like, um, It looks like that you keep it every day. It's not <clears throat> it's not a ritual. It's resting in him every day. I 
I would say it is a hundred percent reliance on him. And yes, every day and the Sabbath again is a, a commemoration and a, a remember just a, a day to commemorate once a week that idea that we are 100% his, that we can trust him fully and that we have nothing to fear. So it sounds like you all are giving me spiritual answers to how you spiritually keep the Sabbath. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna gonna comment about Shady's uh, response, John. Mm -hmm. Shady has told us all a little bit about going through the struggle of when anxiety comes. I remember one time she put it so simply, it was just stopping to remember that Jesus loves her. Is that right, Shady? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that, it that was beginning to learn Sabbath keeping. Real Sabbath keeping. Very good. Yeah, I remember at first, you know, really going through that similar thing of just God loves me. And I was thinking, because I'm sitting here looking at my sweet little girl, I got to show you guys something. <laughs> Hey, sissy, say hi. Hi. And uh, hi. See, see all those little sins all over her hi. face right there? <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't make me love her any less. And, uh, and her mom gave her all these oranges, and she was carrying them around. And she didn't give her a rock, <laughs> like Jesus said in that verse, you know. <laughs> and she left all that stuff all over the door and the doorknob to the house and we still love her <laughs> so anyways th thinking about that that bible verse if you ask for a stone or, or a piece of bread he's not going to give you a stone mm -hmm. i remember reading those a lot and yeah he loves us and he owns everything and he can give us anything of course it's it's grown even more now to have more trust, but yeah. Any more, John? Did you get enough response to that question? Or... Oh yeah, absolutely. So the last paragraph, yeah. and then we're going to stop there. You guys can comment for the last couple of minutes. Last paragraph of this section. I'm going to save the third section of these three Sabbaths for anyone who wants to work on it in the afternoon, but I, I thought our focus should be on this one. Uh, last paragraph, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. And the seventh day, which God forever <clears throat> declares to be his rest, is that which he makes known to us the perfection of his rest, because it calls us to contemplate a finish. You see, you saw that? calls us to contemplate the purpose of the day, which is only the sign. The purpose is to contemplate a finished and perfect new creation. It reveals to us the everlasting God, the unwearied almighty creator <laughs> who has wrought and laid up great goodness for them that trust in him before the sons of men. It reminds us that we are complete in him. That's the one we started on weeks and weeks ago. Wait, is that could not even be true? Reminds us that we are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and powers. It tells us, we're still talking about the seventh day. It tells us that although we have sinned, this is the part Chris was just talking about, and brought the curse upon God's perfect creation, the cross of Christ, which bears the curse or took the curse, restores and perpetuates the perfect work of God. So that though it, 
so that through it, we may stand without fault before the throne of God. Here's your main thing you need to understand about the investigative judgment. So that through it, the, the, the rest, you may stand without fault before the throne of God, just as when man was first made. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Ooh. That's a great presentation on the meaning of Sabbath. <laughs> Any thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Anyone feeling nervous at all? <laughs> Man, this is such a good study today. I like it. Sorry, I'm doing so much reading, but it was it was too exciting stuff. For my that's brother. that's okay. This is me. Yeah, this is big stuff. <clears throat> when we get to the end of the third one, for those of you that may not be able to come back this afternoon, literally what Wagner is going to end up saying is that true Sabbath keeping is righteousness by faith. It is having faith in Jesus. That is Sabbath keeping. The day becomes a connected in a memorial way to that. And that's the part that we've been so distracted from because we've been too busy criticizing everybody else who's not getting to church on the right day. So now I got a question that might really uh, cause people, people to get stoned or like with rocks. <laughs> um, is, you know, so I've wondered and tried to figure this out on the Sabbath for a long time is, uh, so now if we're at rest all week, you know, do we have to now worry about like oh now i wanted to pick up those three rocks and move them over there you know because they were in the way and i actually had time today while i walked fast you know or those kinds of things where jesus told people pick up your mat and walk and they were like oh we need to kill him put him on the cross <laughs> so anyway so i so my my response to that chris would be if John, if you'd highlight with your like you're doing right now, uh, not with the color, but just highlight with your cursor uh, where it says the seventh day, which God forever declares to be His rest, is that by which He makes known to us the perfection of His rest. And and here's the main part because it calls us. Here's the day. It calls us to contemplate. A finished and perfect new creation, meaning what you are to be through the power of Christ. And there's really, we, we shouldn't answer, I believe we shouldn't try to answer that question any other way. Because as soon as we start to say, well, let's talk about whether you polish your shoes or you don't, or whether you pick up the rock or you don't. We, we're going back to what we read about in the Jewish sabbath and someone will quickly say well but then why did no one give us all those things because like the jews we said after hearing the ten commandments oh yeah lord we can do all that and the lord said okay if you can keep this law perfectly you're in so here's a list that you have to keep perfectly and we got all kinds of details about the list and it was never supposed to be that that list would save us that, that list was to show us how incapable of being holy we are so that we would turn to God and, and realize only God could make us holy. And as Ellen White says in Desire of Ages, you can't keep the Sabbath holy unless you are holy. So it's got to get us off of those questions onto what is this? To contemplate the finished and perfect new creation. That's what it's for. So okay. I want <clears throat> to... I want to just make a quick comment on belief. So when we look at this and we contemplate it, and maybe we even decide to believe it, that belief produces something in us. It, um, it has a result. Um, and I'm not speaking to what that result may be. I'm just 
going to now say that if we believe that we can't pick up those three rocks, because if we do, we're bad, that also has a result. It creates in us, if we believe it to be true, something. It creates in us a, a belief of who God is, what he's like. Um, and so I, I don't know why I'm saying that <laughs> other than to say that it is important that we understand these things because what we believe about God, what we believe about the Sabbath will inevitably create something in us. And maybe the word create is appropriate in this instance. Yes, because it's mentioned in Galatians, it's mentioned in Corinthians, it's a basically recreating us and recreating us from our selfless being into a self, a selfish being, excuse me, creating us from a, recreating us from a selfish being into a selfless being, other centeredness. And that only comes from God. Yeah, but we calls us to contemplate a finished and perfect new creation as in you. John, I have a reply. Yes. The, the way I've been seeing it recently, it, it's not a day like between Saturday and Sunday. It's not a day that we're giving to him. It's a day that he's giving to us. So to go back to picking up the stones, if we understand that it's not a day that we are giving to him and he's given to us, doesn't that give us reassurance that it doesn't matter if we pick up those stones or not? Yes. <laughs> but it all, it, it, and, and again, you're starting that the right way because it depends on what we believe to be true. So if we think we can't pick up those stones and we're doing it for him, not him doing it for us. Right. Okay. And that will create a different heart in us than what God is looking for. <laughs> So can that translate to, it doesn't matter if we uh, go to the store and buy dinner for Sabbath night? Well, maybe we should go back to Bobby's answer on that one. <laughs> 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 Which is, it's probably better not to be asking these questions about what we can and can't do. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would go to Paul on that one and say let every man be convinced in his own mind right how how do you feel when I I don't know well and I I love I love uh, you know the fact that again this underscores how automatic it is for us yeah. to return to the wait what's the law say again <laughs> yeah yep because well, what what, what what Wagner just did was explained to us that the true Sabbath is righteousness by faith, uh, not righteousness through law keeping. And yet we still automatically, even I did it. I did it when I was reading that thing Shady you sent me last night. I was like, <laughs> and my brain is returning to, wow, okay, but the law says, and, and it's, it's very hard for us. And, and literally uh, with our Adventist history, what we need to understand, we can talk about this more this afternoon, is literally when, when we got the vision through Sister White about the law and in it a halo around the fourth, God never intended, I believe, never intended that we get all infatuated with rules about Sabbath. What he intended was that we learn what real righteousness by faith was in knowing his character, his goodness, his unconditional love, his unconditional forgiveness, and most importantly, the fact that the cross was in no way to modify the heart of God towards the sinner, but it was God's heart being poured out so the sinners could see it, taste it, feel it, know it, understand his love towards them. 
that's where Sabbath begins. Everything else is a distraction and going back to Judaism, back to the Jewish law, back to the Jewish Sabbath, which Wagner clearly put was, was no better than uh, what we're going to read in the third section about having it on the wrong day. So having it on the right day with not rising by faith is no good at all. And that's what we've been lost, stuck, and, and, and bound up in uh, as we've been wandering around in circles in the wilderness, still not grasping what Chris said about, wait a minute, but the manna is still on the ground and the water is still coming out of the rock. Are we not getting it yet? Right? I so, think, so that that was going, go ahead, Frank. <laughs> well, I was going to mention basically the same thing. I, if you look at the whole Old, Old Testament, it's what Chris was saying. It's all about putting our rest in God. He's saying, trust in me. So that's another synonym for rest. Trust in me. Trust in me. Trust in me. All we need to do is put our trust in him. That's, and that's why I love how Amber said it was Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Yeah. So it was made for us to trust in him. Very but good. Frank, I don't see it. <laughs> I'm not good. When am I going to see it? I better start working on it so I can see it. <laughs> it, it does say just work on resting. Just labor <laughs> to rest. Labor to rest. There you go. That's what Paul said. That's yeah. right. Labor to rest. The only work you got. Well, very good. Feel free, everybody, to read the whole article if you want before this afternoon or if you're not coming back this afternoon. Uh, but uh, we will read the third section for anybody who's interested because it is amazing what he does with the focus on <clears throat> Sabbath on the wrong day of the week, as in Sunday. And it is not the focus that we normally are used to having it put on. And his, his is very much consistent with the presentation of God's character and the presentation of, of righteous by faith. So it is interesting. So if you're not back this afternoon, read it for yourself uh, and, and we can discuss it further this afternoon, anybody who, who wants to. So thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, working through that brand new thing. That was, uh, I hadn't even read that before, but it was great. And keep working on this question uh, and take it further as to, okay, if this stuff is all true, Lord, now how in the world do I start helping those around me who are of either camp, meaning uh, wrong day, right day, but still not really in the rest of God? Um, how, how do we have it for ourselves clear enough, understand it clear enough, experience it? I like Chris's story, I think is great to, to kind of express the experience of it so that our friends and our family, those uh, near and far to us uh, can begin to understand because it, it's not about arguments over who's right and wrong. It's 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 about how to help the the human heart turn and understand so that they might be saved. Right? Teach them right? about Jesus. That's right. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your grace and for this uh, Sabbath day just to commemorate uh, what you did at the cross what you did at creation, but more importantly, what you did at the cross, to rescue, bless, to save us from ourselves, to uh, invite us to stop this incessant working at righteousness by works to pacify ourselves that at least we're better than that other guy over there. So save us from that, rescue us from that, give us the experience, not just theories, uh, but but help us to have an experience of what it really means to rest in you, trust in you, and have, as John is asking about, the results, the results of a changed heart that does truly love the Lord our God and our neighbor as ourself, which is the fulfillment of the whole law. For that, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okie dokie. We'll see some of you at 2.30. Are you going to be uh, back, Amber, at 2.30 or are you out again today? I think I'm back. Okay. Uh, and, and Denise, uh, maybe if she's back. 
I'm just curious on your guys' more thoughts on this as we finish up the article. So we'll see you guys then. Have a good Sounds lunch. Good. Thank you.